two years since Howard County Deputy Carl Kuntz was shot and killed in the line of duty. Tonight, his widow is holding a candlelight vigil. Brittany Lewis had a chance to speak with her about the plans and what the last couple of years have been like for her. Yeah, uh, and she actually describes it in really heartbreaking mm -hmm. detail in a new blog that she's been writing. So I had a chance to talk to her about that and tonight's vigil. It will be at 815 at Albright Cemetery in Kokomo, where Deputy Kuntz is buried. His widow, Cassie Kuntz, will be handing out candles to the first 150 people who come. She told me it would be amazing if people came out to support a hero that was taken too soon. Cassie Kuhn started a blog two days ago. When I wrote about that you can't, that it feels like you can't breathe, um, those words still um, hold true today. Two years after her husband, Deputy Carl Kuntz, was shot and killed in the line of duty. There are days where the wind gets knocked right out of you. Her first post about her journey. The first year, you're numb, you're numb, you're in a, a, a fog. Um, the second year, it starts wearing off, so everything starts hitting reality. Um, that your husband is not coming back home. Her second post about their two-year-old son and her strength, Noah. I do a lot of stuff to help honor Carl, so Noah knows who his dad was, um, and I think that also pushes me. Um, just keep getting his name out there, so Noah doesn't have a doubt of who he was. He was, she says, an amazing person. He would get give your sh his shirt off your back off his back for anybody even if they were walking down the road and it was a stranger he would stop and he would um, talk to them and wonder what they're doing and kind of get personal with them and just he was just that type of person that he liked getting to know people he he held those on he held those stories dearly stories she's now holding on to as she continues to share and write. He doesn't need to be forgotten. About what life without her husband has been like for her. Uh, she t also told me one of the things that has helped her through it is hearing from people whose yeah. lives he's impacted. So in addition to being a deputy, he was also a school resource mm -hmm. officer. And she said after he passed away, she heard from a couple students who said that he saved their lives, oh. uh, either by preventing suicide attempts or overdoses. Um, so she actually told those students, you know, if you need someone to talk to, I'm here oh, for you wow. now too so as you're having that conversation of course the pain is still very fresh in Boone County mm -hmm. which lost a sheriff's deputy did she, did she have any thoughts about the situation that other families may be going through now yeah well she said that obviously hit very close to home for her one it happened in March yeah. the same time as as deputy Coons is shooting there and then she also mentioned the fact that deputy Pickett was a deputy right. yeah. um, so I know that she has reached out to the Pickett family and has been are there for them during this time as well. When so. you think about it, there's not many people who would truly understand mm -hmm. that pain. And unfortunately, there have been several women in our community who have mm -hmm. known this now. Yeah, and mm -hmm. she said they all grieve differently too. So they yeah. get together, they talk, but they are really the only ones who understand what it is like. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, Thanks for the little glimpse at it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Brittany, thank you. It's a quarter after nine right now.